Nuke 14.0 is the starting point for the next evolution of Nuke, with a major architectural change with the introduction of a brand new 3D system, the continuation and expansion of cutting edge machine learning and real time tools, support for the latest industry standards and files, and much more. This release is all about helping artists work more efficiently and laying the groundwork for how artists work with Nuke for years to come. This release introduces a completely new beta 3D system to Nuke, which is being re-architected from the ground up with the goal of providing greater performance at scale while still maintaining the ease of use and familiarity users currently enjoy, so that artists can feel at home while benefiting from a modernized 3D system. The new system will be based on USD, as this allows us to develop a more performance system targeted at the needs and workflows of Nuke artists. This release is the first step for this new 3D system, focusing on getting the core architecture in place with as much workflow parity as possible to the classic system. As we know USD brings new workflows for 3D and comp, we are releasing this as a beta feature and will build new workflows with you. This is because we want Nuke artists to be an integral part of shaping the new 3D system across the 14 series and to develop this new system with you at the center of it. There will be a new forum dedicated for 3D feedback available to all Nuke users and we're really excited to discuss with you the future of 3D compositing in Nuke. To ensure artists don't lose access to any of the workflows they depend on, we will also be releasing the new 3D system and the classic 3D system in parallel with each other. This means that you will have access to all the existing nodes and workflows you are used to, but will also be able to create new nodes for the new 3D system and work with them. As part of the 3D system update, we have introduced a new performance scene graph to allow you to view the contents of your 3D scene. The scene graph offers an overview of your 3D scene and is a tool to view, navigate, and manage large 3D scenes, allowing artists to work with much larger complexity in an intuitive way. This is now a dedicated panel in Nuke and will be familiar to artists who have worked with similar tools in other softwares. But for Nuke artists less familiar with scene graph workflows, we have focused on making this as intuitive as possible with features like search functionality, visibility and override workflows, cross selection between the scene graph and 3D viewer, and much more. With a new hierarchical structure and the ability to work with more complex 3D scenes, we are introducing new path and mask knobs to geo creation and geo modifier nodes. Path knobs allow you to specify where you want imported objects to live in your scene graph, while mask knobs allow you to specify which parts of your scene graph you want a node to affect. These knobs work as a simplified cell expression language, so that by default we can use tokens and expressions to allow artists to work intuitively without having to work about managing paths or setting masks, so you're free to just copy and paste and play around. But as soon as you want to manage and refine your scene hierarchy or add more complex selection masks, then you can drag and drop paths from the scene graph, use the picker to select geometry in the 3D viewer, or just use the new expression language and tokens to create more advanced selections and workflows. The goal is for these knobs to be intuitive as soon as you create them, but then allow for deeper workflows when you need them to. For artists working with USD files that contain materials, lights, and looks, you'll be able to load these into the new 3D system and immediately see your scene with everything displayed right away. This gives artists a way to quickly see their assets in a more accurate representation inside Nuke's 3D Hydra viewer. Sometimes, however, you just need the geometry itself and to work quickly. With that in mind, we've introduced a new display materials checkbox on the geo import node, which allows you to toggle between displaying these materials or not to help improve performance when navigating in large scenes. Core workflows with materials and shaders has remained consistent with the classic 3D system. You can use the image input, which is now a hidden input to the right of the new 3D nodes to allow for node stacking without the need of a merge node. And then you can quickly apply a texture or material to your geometry or you can use the new geo bind material node to create more advanced setups and utilize materials that already exist in the stage. The new preview surface node is the first step into Nuke fully supporting USD material networks and allows you to create more complex materials in Nuke based on USD specular or metallic workflows. The lights in the new 3D system are all USD based. So if you're working with other USD applications, you will get the same USD light in Nuke with the same values and results. 
With these new USD lights and materials combined with Hydra and future support for additional renderers in Nuke's 3D viewport, this means artists could see a more consistent image across applications. Please note that all the 3D system work is in beta and a work in progress. So while we are excited to put this out for artists to play and give feedback in the new forums, please be aware that not all functionality for these features and others will be complete and we will continue to develop the 3D system with each successive release. We view the new 3D system as being a strong platform for future workflows in Nuke and this extends to other features as well with the 14.0 release as we will be supporting the latest industry standards with support for the Visual Effects Reference Platform 2022. This brings a number of upgraded or updated third-party libraries such as Qt, OCAO and C++ and this work continues to ensure connectivity between all your DCCs, reducing as much pipeline friction as possible regardless of your specific Nuke use case or pipeline size. Color management is a vital part of any VFX and animation workflow and having a consistent color image across multiple platforms, applications and devices is essential. So with 14.0, we are introducing support for the latest OCO 2.1 and ASUS 1.3 versions. For ASUS, this includes two new configs, a lightweight version called CG for use in animation without the many camera input transforms that make up the bulk of the OCO V1 ASUS configs, and a full studio version geared towards VFX and live action shows that require a wide variety of camera color spaces, displays and looks. We're introducing a new name transform OCO node and soft effect, which allows you to include standalone transforms, which can be useful for emulating older methods of color management that ignored the RGB primaries and simply applied one dimensional transformations. And for ACES workflows, a new ACES reference gamut compression feature, which helps fix artifacts from out of gamut values in source images. With this update to OCO 2.1, we have laid the groundwork for further exciting color management features in the Nuke 14 series, and we are looking forward to seeing how you implement these features into your color pipelines. With this release, we have updated three SDKs from Sony, ARRI, and RED, adding support for brand new flagship cameras from these major manufacturers. These include the Alexa 35 camera from ARRI, the brand new Venice 2 camera from Sony, and the V-Raptor XL camera from RED. All of these cameras are supported by new input transforms from the ACES 1.3 config in the OCO color management option, providing the best possible color renditions in Nuke and Nuke Studio. A format that we are looking to the future with is Open Timeline IO, and this release sees our continued support for this interchange format with support for the latest 0.15 update. This sees the import and export of editorial cuts, including dissolves and retimes, as well as auto-conform with correct file paths for review playlists. Beyond that, we believe that Open Timeline IO can be the interchange format for modern editorial workflows that allows you to carry all the data you need from the start of production to the end in one place, and this is what we are excited to build towards. For artists working with HDR data, we are including colorimetry metadata support to allow for users to have an easier and quicker setup for their monitoring devices. Further improvements have been made to the viewer monitor out to improve HDR workflows. A new section has been added to enable and control metadata passed over HDMI or SDI to the viewing device. When the HDR metadata is not enabled, the monitor will be set to normal SDR display. But when enabled, the viewing device will automatically be set to the correct display mode using VPIDs. The video content is not changed at all, just the way in which it is displayed. With these ongoing updates to monitor out, we are continuing to provide greater workflow efficiencies, making review sessions more productive. And for artists using Hero Player, our free review tool, they now have access to full OCIO soft effects support on their own timeline. This means projects imported from Studio or Hero can be opened and all the OCO soft effects can now be accessed and adjusted and new instances of OCO can be added on new tracks or clips, giving you even greater control over how you work with soft effects in Hero Player and allowing artists to better review in the context of a sequence. Login-based licensing has been introduced for both teams and individuals as of Nuke 14 across the entire Nuke family and it's here to help make licensing and working with flexible teams easier. 
All you need is an email and password, and you can log in to access and use your Nuke Family software licenses on any machine wherever you need to. This gives you greater flexibility and control over how users administer and manage software and licenses, and allows you to roam licenses when you need to. This new functionality will be available to users with active maintenance from Nuke 14 onwards, and this new system is entirely opt-in and can run alongside our current RLM licensing support. The Unreal Reader node introduced in the Nuke 13 series is coming out of beta for 14.0 and is ready for artists to take advantage of in order to advance new real-time workflows with the control and flexibility of Nuke. In this release, we have added the ability to add custom render passes, which can provide artists with an expanded set of render passes for greater control over the final look. You can also now control open color I.O. settings for the Unreal render to ensure color consistency in your Unreal and Nuke pipeline. And in Nuke 14, we have added metadata from Unreal level sequence actors to the EXR render, allowing you to automatically drive settings in your Nuke composite such as depth of field values, light positions, and axis modes for reference. There have also been improvements in the workflows for selecting maps and sequences with a number of additional filter options. All of this culminates in a new way for artists to stream their data from Unreal into Nuke and utilize all your compositing tools and tricks to help enhance real-time workflows. The Copycat node was also introduced in the Nuke 13 series, and artists have been showcasing some amazing results with a node that puts machine learning in the hands of artists. For 14.0, we wanted to keep accelerating these workflows, and have improved Copycat with faster training on NVIDIA Ampere GPUs, accelerated results when matting humans, and brand new visualization features for multi-channel workflows that allow you to better highlight the relationships between images during training. With this release, Copycat is faster, more reliable, and easier to use, and we will continue to push these tools to help accelerate your workflows. A great new addition for 14.0 is the release of the Cattery. This is a library of some of the most popular third-party machine learning models, which have been converted to run natively inside of Nuke as .cat files that can be used with the inference node. The collection of models includes segmentation, depth estimation, optical flow, upscaling, and more, all available as a separate download that can be put into your .nuke folder to be included for use in Nuke. With Cattery, we are bridging the gap between academia and production and giving every artist access to the best in third-party open source machine learning models. With Nuke 14.0, we really want to accelerate artists and push the future of Nuke by introducing new features and tools that can be built with you across the 14 series. Thank you as always for your artistry and passion and happy comping.